It's all here. It's all we are human. We're divinely human, human divine, and we, through yoga, we become even more deeply human to show up in a real way with each other, so that we can make real change in our lives and on this planet. That was Siana Sherman. Hey everyone, Danny Pomploon. I'm back at you with the Yogi Misfit Sessions. And today it is session 122 with the one and only Siana Sherman. She is a wonderful, wonder, wonderful human being. Um, and yeah, I feel like I kind of know Siana because we have um, a couple of students that, uh, that practice with both of us. And so I, I always hear um, a lot about her. And uh, yeah, it was really cool to connect. We end up talking about shadow work on this episode. And shadow work actually, for me, is pretty new. Uh, we recorded this, obviously, before COVID time. But someone had given me a book on shadow work and, and just working with that side of yourself. And it's been pretty, uh, I'll just say interesting for lack of better work or better words anyway. Um, it's been really interesting to look at the different side of our of myself anyway and, and reflect and kind of shine, shine some light in there. Anyway, we get into it um, in this episode, which is uh, super fun. And, and I had a really good time with her uh, on the show. And yeah, I think we might be getting her back on the show to chat a little bit more. So uh, as always, it goes without saying, you guys, so much love. Thank you guys for loving on the show and for sharing this with your friends. And uh, hopefully it's keeping you somewhat sane and normal while uh, we go through all this. And without further ado, here goes session 122 with Sienna Sherman. Siana, welcome to the show. Thank you, Danny. I'm really grateful to be here. I am so stoked to, to have you on. I have so many um, so many of my yoga friends and other colleagues and, and people that we we both know that are we're just really excited for me to get to have this conversation with you. So <laughs> I'm excited. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the, that's the best part about this is I get to, um, and again, I'll emphasize, I get to uh, speak to so many like amazing yoga teachers and, and wellness practitioners and meditators and um, dive into their wisdom. And it's, I just think it's the coolest thing in the whole wide world. <laughs> yes. I've been listening to some of your podcasts and they're very inspiring. And so thanks for making this offering and dedication to the world. It's super beneficial. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's a great way to, it's another way to share our voices, you know, and I think it's, it's another way that people, um, you know, some people connect through voice and some people connect through word and some through movement. And this is just another avenue to get it out there. <laughs> so Sienna, I have, um, I have all the questions for you, um, but mainly to, to get to know you, <laughs> it's gonna be the five hour podcast, <laughs> <laughs> uh, mainly to, to, you know, get to know a little more about what you've done and, and, and what you've created. Um, and to also let the listeners know, um, where you've gone with Rasa Yoga, I would love to, I would love for you to just d d d d give us the uh, the lowdown on it. Okay, great. So Rasa Yoga is my school of yoga, and mm -hmm. really started to come together. I would say beginning around 2014, and then establishing itself more in its first training in 2015, and now to the point where. I really speak of it as the Rasa Yoga Collective because I see it as a school of yoga, but also a real collective movement of community and all of us coming together as accountable teachers and deep students of life and wanting to see positive change and positive impact on the earth and through the gateway of the yoga tradition and for the earth and for the world. And mm -hmm. I, I have been a practitioner of yoga um, more than 30 years. And mm -hmm. when I first came onto the path of yoga, I became very interested in the path of Tantra when I was in my early 20s. And it was one of my first trips over to India. And I started mm -hmm. to study various tantric lineages and in my 20s, I learned about the rasa theory uh, from the tantric okay. tradition. And I remember, I mean, I was pretty young at the time, and I was studying with a lot of different 
teachers, all amazing beings and going back and forth to India. But I had this like little glimpse of a thought that, oh, if I ever had a school of yoga, I would call it rasa. And because it made sense to me on every level, and essentially for this reason, rasa and rasa theory, rasa means like the, the gateway of the emotional essences of our being that make us very deeply human and to become the best human that we can be. And rasa means the taste, the flavor, the nectar, the, it's the juiciness of the soul. And it's out of the rasas, out of these gateways that the arts uh, come into being. And so Indian dance and theater and the ragas of music, they all are born out of rasa. And so there are these Mm -hmm. nine, kind of emotional gateways, you could say, of the rasas that include everything from our, you know, most ecstatic bliss and joy to our anger, our fear, and our disgust. And what turned me on about it is that it was so whole and it was such an invitation to be deeply intimate with the whole of our being and not to uh, cast out, reject, or deny any part of our experience. And also, to catch us, so to speak, in any tendency to to bypass what's really going on, like a spiritual bypass, to reach for only the light, but not see the the deep pain of, <laughs> of what we actually are working with, and try to you know run from it. So it's when, what I like to call when people just transcend that. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> people so, are like, uh, you know, I'm just going to transcend that and call it a totally, day. Totally, <laughs> totally. And so when so when I was in my twenties, I had studied a lot with this. A Jungian shadow tracker, and I already had a very just deep love of of this kind of understanding of life. And then I was deep in the yoga tradition, and I came across the Rasa theory. So then, fast forward to all these years later, uh, there were various students and dreams as well, and some close peers and friends who were saying, "You should really bring this school to life." Mm -hmm. and we want you to, and they were asking me to. And to be honest, I actually really resisted it because I just thought, wow, you know, that's a lot of responsibility. And do I have what it takes, you know, to, to, to lead this in a good, accountable way with, with really just responsible leadership. And I also knew in my heart that I didn't want to do it alone. I didn't want to be like this teacher at the top, so to speak, that everyone was learning from. I wanted a collective um, movement and a paradigm shift as well. And so that's why it's called the Rasa Yoga Collective. And I have lots of different teachers who are teaching teacher trainings along with me in different parts of the world. And it's very artful and soulful and a deep love of life and embodiment of the yoga tradition and the tantric pathways. And then also of the arts and artistic celebration and of deep shadow work and emotional intimacy too. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. (laughs) And how's the growth of it doing now? I mean, is it still, I mean, is it still uh, growing and are you still creating? I love that you said that you're creating a collective of, of what I think about as more leaders versus one person just being at the top. Yes. You know, it's, it's going great. And I, I will say that it's especially going great because I I am not so business oriented and mm-hmm. I it's not my background or training or what I ever really have thought about so much so I have been very much like in the field, so to speak, traveling. I've been traveling for three decades and I like to be with people and I like to teach and I'm now finding you know the ways to bring things into the world through the social media and all of that, but that's kind of trailed behind me. My, my big movement has always been like with people and on the road. And so now with the school and the collective, I'm also upgrading myself and up leveling my ability to, to, I don't know, to, to really have the feeling translate. I want to say through, Mm -hmm. Uh, through the media channels and 
all yeah. of this. So the website is now being constructed and we started an Instagram page and I have these beautiful uh, teachers of the Rasa Yoga Collective. I have a co-director of the school. Her name is Greta Hill in Seattle. Mm-hmm. We just brought on a sustainable leadership uh, a guide for our school. Her name is Rosie Llewellyn and she's down in Haiti. And so we're building it with the expertise and the love and the passion of all these different friends and so that it's it's more than just me and yet I'm I'm spearheading so to speak I'm visionary in a in a big way right. but I'm opening it up and grounding it as best as I can and opening it into the genius zone of all these beautiful uh, teachers and friends that truly is the best way to do it you know with I mean it's that, that you just completely completely circled into bringing in a community not doing it solo but inviting others who believe and who want to be um, empowered and and uh, want to help support the bigger vision I, I love I love all of that mm, thank you <laughs> yeah it, it feels good it feels true to my heart it feels good and I can see that the it is growing and again I travel a lot and people come to me and they really share with me their stories of how rasa yoga is impacting their lives and I it's very much about the alchemy of yoga so there's a lot of asana and pranayama and meditation but we also have a lot of mantra and mudra a lot of shadow work a lot of accountable leadership training um, all these things and sustainable leadership too and social justice is a big part of it and you know we're, we're really trying to make this as well rounded and whole and real for what is actually happening in our lives and in the world yeah it's and and it, it, there is a lot of that um you know there is a lot of move i mean all great things right movement is super great and being able to be in one's body is it's a gift and it's truly amazing and there's so much more uh beneath the surface that we we need to honor and um and to acknowledge and to bring out there's so much truth and power and connection in the in in the subtle um just as much as there is in in the physical yes. you know <laughs> I'd love to, uh, you know, you were talking about this shadow work. Um, You mentioned it a couple of times and I would love to just, I mean, I would love, I don't know that I know too much about shadow work and, you know, what it is and how it entails and how we move or work Mm, with it through yoga. Okay, beautiful. And I also, because I I really love to just give credit along the way, the first teacher, and I, I didn't mention, the first teacher that I learned the Rasa theory from is Dr. Douglas Brooks. And he's an amazing uh, he's been an amazing mentor and guide uh, in my life. So I, I wanted to remember to name him and to give that shout out and say thank you for that great. We love Douglas. Okay, we know Douglas, <laughs> yes. I'm so excited that I had these teachings with him early on. So with shadow, there's a lot of ways that we can can enter this realm. But I, I might start by saying that shadow is all the parts of ourselves that we keep in the dark that we're in denial of that we cast out reject or deny you know for any reason whatsoever and that in a, even a deeper way that shadow is the container for things that we are not facing in our own conditioning and it can go back to you know our childhood to traumas to just ways that we have been conditioned ways that we survive the best that we could, whatever the experience may have been for us. And a lot of times when we think of shadow, we think to ourselves, oh, that's like the most scary stuff, you know, the really tough stuff to see about ourselves. It's, um, and it has a lot of fear wrapped around it. And we might tend to judge it as a negative thing. And yet, what lives in our shadow can be a range of everything. It can be our own vulnerability can live in our shadow, our empathy, our greatness, our bigness, uh, that we're afraid of our own power lives in our shadow. So shadow is whatever we are not paying attention to about ourselves. And mm-hmm. then what happens is if left unattended to, then it begins to govern us. It begins to run our lives. Um, And there is a teaching that the degree to which we don't know our shadow is the degree to which we can be run by our shadow. 
And so it's okay. difficult to face, you know, shadow work doesn't get like a lot of, let's say big marketing, um, attention because it's, it, we don't want to face the things that might be painful for us. <laughs> no, that requires personal <laughs> responsibility. Who wants yes. that? <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, great. Great show. We'll talk to you later, Sienna. Bye. <laughs> yeah, thank you. You know, like the, the yogis, we love, we love to talk about the energy, the flow of prana and all these things. And think of it this way, that if we have something in our shadow, that mm-hmm. we are not facing, it can take up an enormous amount of space inside sure. of us. And it's really just taking up space and it, and it creates a lot of knots and tangles in our being. And then what happens when something in life happens, like a trigger, we end up reacting to it. We can react, we can shut down to it, we can dissociate, we can fuse with it, we right. can act out, we can become aggressive, hostile. There's all sorts of things that happen from kind of a low bar place where we're reacting to life rather than responding to life and relating with whatever arises in the depth of our being. So if a feeling comes up that's um, tough for us, like a, a, a feeling of you know, just sadness or fear or feeling abandoned or abandoned or rejected, instead of really embracing that, if we run from it, it only grows bigger, you know, so what we resist persists and it grows bigger and bigger until it grabs our attention somehow, or, you know, there's some sort of breakdown in life that that makes us um, say, okay, hey, I want to pay attention to this. And so right. what we learn to do is work with our shadow, turn towards it, embrace it so that we can liberate the energy from within and have a more clear mind and a more radiance of being and a vitality of being and a clarity and discernment in our thoughts so that we can, in a very as healthy way as possible and responsible way as possible, respond to life and relate more deeply with each other and be more intimate with the whole of our being rather than shutting down uh, a lot of our being. It's, it sounds like it's a, it makes it a way to get to know all aspects of yourself without shaming it or without feeling bad for having the experience of, you know, being sad or feeling bummed out or, you know, having fear or any of that. It's, it almost sounds like it's a way of just inviting it all in and, and getting to know it a little bit better. Do you, (laughs) yeah, do you feel like, I don't know, I mean, I'm sure, you know, on Instagram and just in general in life, there's, it seems to be a lot of high vibe. Everything is high vibe right Mm -hmm. now. Everything's like, it's all positive vibes only, positive vibe only, you know? And it almost feels like for me, or maybe it's just as I'm hearing you uh, speak of the shadow work, it almost feels like this mentality of high vibes only and, you know, like positive positivity all the time, it almost pushes away that side of ourselves that we truly need to uh, get to know, you know, like being, being able to, for me, when I hear that, like being able to understand the shadow work, it teaches us empathy. It teaches us, like you just said, like how to connect with other people, Mm -hmm. how to um, acknowledge the human being within versus just the, Oh, you know, well, you'll get over that. Or, you know, there's something better on the other side of that. You know, do you think that there is, um, I don't know. What do you think about the whole, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what's the whole, what, yeah. what do you think about the whole, like, high vibe mentality <laughs> and just kind of dis, it's almost like discrediting your human experience. Oh, thank you. You know, it's really uh, beautiful to have this conversation with you. And if I always relate back to the root of the word yoga, yuj, which is to yoke and to connect. And the, in a certain way, a prerequisite of real connection and let's say intimacy is Mm -hmm. that we have to be brave enough to be vulnerable and to be Mm -hmm. open and to be transparent. And if we only stick with reaching for the high vibes, the positive vibes, you know, in essence, we're missing out on a huge, gorgeous um, aspect of our being which is holding everything. And the bravery that it takes, the courage that it takes to let ourselves drop the mask so that there's nothing to prove and nothing to hide, but to simply be, to be a human being. And that Mm -hmm. we don't have to put on this facade that everything's perfect in a certain kind of way in order to be liked or to 
whatever, to gain someone's attention, what really happens is that we're connecting in our deep shared humanity and things ground down and become so real. And now we're in a relate, we're relating with each other and you can feel it. You can feel, you can feel like the, the ground within you just settle and the heart open. And now if we're connecting in this place, we know that we're being real with each other. We know that we're being like more transparent with each other. Then out of this field, no matter what happens, some tough stuff or some really joyful stuff, we're, we're relating together and everything opens up from here. I often think that the most advanced yoga is the capacity to keep our heart open in the midst of conflict and mm. to be with each other in this way so that, um, Again, you know, high vibes and, and positive vibration, I, I'm not going to take it down. That's awesome, too. I'm going to say right. it's a both and. It's all here. It's all We right. are human. We're divinely human, human divine. And we, through yoga, we become even more deeply human to show mm -hmm. up in a real way with each other so that we can make real change in our lives and on this planet. Hey guys, this episode is sponsored by Blue Blocks, their advanced blue light filtering eyewear. Um, I recently got a pair of these glasses and I've been using them during the day to help filter out some of the blue light that comes through on your computer and it eventually helps you uh, lead to better sleep. They have three lens, lens options, uh, red for sleep, uh, yellow for helping with anxiety and depression, and then clear ones are the ones that I use every day for the computer. Um, and if you sit at the computer for more than like an hour a day, I can't recommend recommend these enough. The science behind it backs everything that goes with it. Buy a pair on their website, uh, www.blueblocks.com. That's B-L-U-B-L-O-X.com. And again, I got the clear ones um, because I'm on my computer all day long. So go check out our friends over at blueblocks.com. B-L-U-B-L-O-X.com. Hey, what's up guys? This episode is sponsored by Ladder. I recently have been practicing yoga, I don't know, maybe three, four, five hours a day uh, since I'm teaching all these live classes and their products really do help sustain me. Um, I've been using a lot of their uh, plant-based protein, but I've also been using their essential greens and I've got to tell you, I've gone through a lot of different supplement companies. I'm super picky about what I put in my body and their stuff by far has been the best. You can check out their stuff over at ladder.sport. And if you use the code better every day, you get 30% off on your order. Yeah, that's ladder.sports and it's 30% off if you use the code better every day. I think I, I I just said this in class this week. It's kind of funny, Sianna, but okay. you know, it may work work with me on this if you can. Ten years later, like I, I just am coming into ten years. You know, ten years later, I thought the entire time. I mean, I was doing yoga for a long time, and and I I just recently have been like, I don't need to do the yoga. I just need to be the yoga, and and really, the yoga is doing me. You know, if if if. You know, when we're in the when we're in the uh, when, we're, when we're in it when we're in the, in the flow state what I like <laughs> to call it but I was I was in class on uh, I think it was uh, Friday last week or, or whatever day it was and I was teaching this alignment cue and I'm you know spitting out words and things and I was like you know it's something along the lines of like put you know because poses can be challenging and I want you guys to just sit there and and observe and not attach and blah, 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 you know, something along the lines. And then I get to Shavasana and I bring everyone out and we're in meditation. And I, I open everyone's eyes. I was like, you guys, it just dawned on me why I teach me what I teach you. And they kind of looked at me like, what? And I was like, because life hands us yoga poses every day. Life hands us yoga poses and their breakups, their um, death and family, they're, you know, losing our, 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 our I don't know, whatever, <laughs> dealing, it's tax time, dealing with the IRS, <laughs> you know, and, and the reason why we, we, for me anyway, or what can, kind of came to is like the reason wh why I want you to learn about yourself in this room and, and to, to hold the boundary and hold the stita, hold the sukha, you know, find the effort, the ease and, and listen and tune in and, and acknowledge 
and not just let the story take over is because you're going to step out into the world and yoga is just as you know when you have this experience of of listening to yourself in in a pose that may be challenging for you or an easy pose and 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 turning it up there's this sense of you interacting with god you know when you're interacting with yourself and you're there you know you're you're what the divine whatever you'd like to call it you're having this like connection and when you bring that into the outside world for, for me it not only gives you the skill set for life which is super great i mean but also it lets you have that same connection with everybody you interact with with anyone you can look in the eyes with you know or, or not even look in the eyes with but you get to have that same connection because you bring your brain doesn't know the difference you know if if i'm if i'm standing up and reaching my arm up or if i'm on handstand and reaching my hand down all my brain says is you are reaching your arm you know and i believe you know my body my soul my spirit you know it doesn't say hey right now you're being you know yoga or you're you're practicing th- this internal concept of of listening and tuning in in the yoga pose and then okay you're not doing it in the real world no it just says i'm doing the thing again mm-hmm. <laughs> I looked at everyone. I was like, "Oh my god, you guys! This this just dawned on me." <laughs> the, the revelation but it's a way to, <laughs> Oh my god, yeah, because we've all been there. Yeah, we 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 get into a yoga. You have yoga poses that you, I'm sure, love, and yoga poses that you hate, and the same. And and you know, it's getting to know the. It's like you said, it's getting to know the things that make me uncomfortable, and learning to listen to them, and to honor them, and to respect them, and then you know, it's it's. It's the conversation that I like to give the the tough stuff, including myself. It's, it's, I love you, you know, I'm sorry, I forgive you and thank you. And then, you know, and then once that process has, has happened, then it's okay. Where do we, what do we do from here? And now knowing all of that. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. For the first time in 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. How do you feel? Uh, how do you feel that that we step into this shadow side? Like, how do we encourage more people? You know, our, our I mean, people are listening as students to embrace this and not to run away from mm-hmm. it. One thing is to ask ourselves, you know, really, what are what are we showing up for in this life? What is it that our heart really truly yearns for and Mm -hmm. i have been with my family a lot over the last couple months and there's been a lot of deaths in my family on both my maternal and um, paternal side and when you really sit at these gateways of death and you see the end of a life and it's the birth into yet a next new beginning everything gets quiet and distills And all that Mm -hmm. peripheral noise, all the things that we're chasing and think that we want and this and that, it gets very quiet and distilled and refined. And we begin to really see in front of us what matters the most to us, you know, in our hearts and in this life. And when we come to that and then we ask, how can I come into a greater relationship with the power of love and with the people who are near me and with this world, it be, it begins to reveal itself and that we want, that we want to face what is in our shadow so that we can have the most optimal energy available for ourselves and for our lives to live this life fully. It is just as in the yoga tradition, the alchemical practices of yoga are transforming and transmuting us. So too is it with shadow work and this deep intimacy with embracing our pain and the places that we're afraid to see that it begins to transform us into we could what the tradition calls a body of gold. And in, mm. there's one of my favorite, I'm a storyteller. I tell a lot of the mythology of the yoga tradition, but there's a very famous story of the Samudra Mantana myth, and it's the churning of the ocean. And the 
gods and goddesses have lost their nectar. They've lost the ambrosia. And, you know, they're trying to figure out how are we going to get it back? But it's living way down at the bottom of the ocean. And Lakshmi has gone to the bottom of the ocean and the nectar has gone to the bottom of the ocean. And so they go to Vishnu and they say, what are we going to do? And he says, okay, here's what you have to do. Get all the gods and goddesses together. And he says, all the demons too. And together, Mm -hmm. you must all work together to churn the great ocean over a long period. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. And so, right there, we already know that it's not just gathering the parts of ourselves that we're like, oh, these are the awesome parts of myself, the gods and the goddesses. You know, Mm. it's what about my demons? You know, I got to go down and and get get all of them working together too. And we all work together. And then, as they turn the ocean, all these gifts come out of the ocean, jewels and etc. And but then midway part of the churning, a poison comes out of the ocean and everyone runs, you know, it's the hala hala. Oh my gosh, you know, here's the poison run from it. But it's also symbolic Mm -hmm. of that as we work deeply, that things will reveal and we are going to see more and more of the truth about ourselves and they reveal so that they can heal. And that we are asked to very deeply feel to the depth of our being so that we can heal these undercurrents. And then we're turning the parts all together. And eventually, of course, Lakshmi rises, the healing elixir arises, and the, you know, it's a, a happy day in the end. But, you know, but this is the process, you know, metaphorically and mythopoetically, but it is actually mm. what's happening. And, you know, just look to our closest relationships. These are where the biggest triggers are, is in our relationships, the most immediate surroundings is often where we've got the toughest stuff as a trigger, because it's where we want to, you know, be defensive the most or or, um, justify our side or not see it. And these are the people that we're living closest with. This is the greatest mirror. And if we start working with shadow work, what happens is that we become increasingly more willing, and I might even say more comfortable with the discomfort of naming our pain. So we're in a tough moment. We're in a big conflict, let's say, with our with our partner. And we, instead of running from it or uh, reacting out to it, we can just simply start to name my heart is racing, my throat feels tight, my jaw feels tight, my stomach's in knots, I feel pain right now, I feel like running away, I don't want to face this. We just start naming it. And I feel shame mm-hmm. right now in this moment. I, And we don't have to put it on anyone, we simply start to face it, to name it. And what happens is that a connection starts to open up. And the place that was totally Mm -hmm. shut down and disconnected and could go on for days and into years, all of a sudden has a little opening so that that moment of heartbreak becomes the threshold place of the heart awake. And here we are together Mm -hmm. in a real deep, true way. And, you know, I have a lot more I could say, but I, I think that might be good for right now. (laughs) <laughs> I'm sitting here like, yes, girl, preach it. <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, so true on so many points. It's it's really, it's just uh, like you said, it's getting to know the different sides of us. I think, you know, it, it can be, it can be really, it can be really scary because it's been said for so long. Well, you know, there's a lot of that, you know, we don't talk about the bad. We don't talk about any of that. There's a lot of, um, even on the social media where we see where there's, everyone looks like they have perfect (laughs) lives and everything is going great when in all actuality, that's not really how it works. And I think, you know, we both, we both know this, right. There's, there's an honor to, there's an honor to being vulnerable, but it's just, it's really, it can be really hard and it can be really Mm -hmm. challenging. But when you get to name the thing, you then, you know, you become, I, 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 uh, like, you know, like you said, like, I, I think about, um, naming the thing and, and getting to know it and, you know, holding its hand and taking it for a walk. Mm-hmm. That's, that's wonderful. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. And one thing that has been, re- I started shadow work in my early twenties and now I'm in my fifties and I, I want to just name one thing that I, that I, a way that I have seen this um, truly be my ally, not just in my personal relationships, but of course, also as a leader and a teacher where many things come up, you know, when you are in deep teacher trainings, there's a lot that happens and you, you, you must be 
really at ease um, with everything that's going to come up because it's all going to come, it's all going to hit the surface, you know, when you're in these very deep trainings. And so the more familiar we are with the whole of ourselves and everything that is possible and how to work with it, the more that we can hold the space for this great transformation that is happening individually in people and then as a collective. And in the last uh, couple years, last two, three years in particular, I'm working very deeply to uh, unpack my own white privilege because I'm in Mm. a culture of wellness that has uh, the proximity. I have a great proximity to power in the Mm -hmm. culture of wellness that, that has been governed by whiteness. And if I... Uh, run from this. If I run from this and I want to numb out or pretend like it's not there, I will only perpetuate the problem and uh, not be able to really lean into the tough stuff. So this shadow work on the very personal level, as well as on the big collective level, is so critical because we are um, training ourselves refining ourselves, alchemizing ourselves to show up fully and to lean into the tough stuff so that we can make true change. And Mm -hmm. that if we want to stand for real connection, that yoga is connection, that yoga is freedom and liberation, then it must be for all of us, not just for a privileged few. And so all of this is, you know, um, it's a big integrated field. And that is one of the reasons why I encourage people to to face, you know, what's in the shadow and in a very loving and compassionate way and at a pace that we can digest. Like, don't just go for the, you know, the crazy toughest stuff first and then be blown out of the water. Like, we have to digest it, work with a skilled practitioner, my teacher, the the teacher that I work with now and that I'm in an apprenticeship and mentorship with is Robert Augustus Masters. And you know, work with someone very skilled also. What do you, what would you say as a, as a, I guess for, for those of us tuning, you know, tuning in, what are some quick, not quick, easy, but where's a great starting place with this? Okay. So in our own body is the place. And so um, when, when something arises, a trigger arises, in our lives, we begin in our own body. And I like to always begin with a grounding cord and with the earth energy so that we just feel our feet in the earth, wherever we are inside, outside, however it might be, but we really go down and in and connect. And there's great, tremendous power here and with the earth. And we observe within our body without any judgment at all. We simply name what we are experiencing in our body, this great somatic intelligence, you know, that is our own body wisdom. And so we name whatever it is. My feet are, my feet and hands are sweaty right now. My voice is shaky. I, I, my, my, my gut is tight, whatever it Mm. might be. We simply name it. And then as we name, name what's happening in our body, now we can, turn towards the feelings. And this part is really fun. And we get to name our feelings. I am feeling afraid right now. I am feeling really pissed off and angry right right now. You know, we start naming it, but we're not um, putting it out on anyone. We're simply naming the feelings. And then we get to do the real trick of it. Because oftentimes our, our one part of our mind will jump in to try to give us a story to follow. So we'll say, um, instead of just saying, uh, I feel sad and I feel rejected right now, instead of saying that, we might say, um, gosh, you know, like when you didn't call me, then I, 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 it just, I knew that you weren't paying attention to me and that you weren't picking up your phone or you weren't responding to my text message. And I, it, you know, and we just go on with this story and instead of just naming what we feel. Mm -hmm. And so it can't, it, the mind will try to give us a story to name, to make it all seem better, to get us out of our feelings, but just being with the body 
and being with what we feel is really going to be the key. Mm. And then from there, once we're able to do that, then we can start asking ourselves, wow, uh, when is the last time that I felt like this? You know, when, and we start to track it. It's what I call shadow tracking. Mm-hmm. And we start to track it. When's the last time I felt this? And then we, as we keep tracking, we might even go back to a very young age. Oh, I felt this when. And we see that it's not so much what has happened in that moment, that story of the moment that is our so-called problem. It is what has been with us all along that we haven't come into relationship with. And so now we are just continually right. trigger after trigger reacting from this place, <laughs> this, this unattended to place that is holding a massive amount of the energy and wisdom for us. These are the gems mm-hmm. and the jewels of our own being. It's all making sense. <laughs> I just think this is kind of, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I literally was, I, I was talking to a friend. I was like, I'm so excited to talk about the shadow stuff. And I just had this revelation for me. I'm selfishly. Right. I just had this revelation <laughs> of like, I think I teach it because I want people to have these tools in the outside world. And you're over here echoing it. <laughs> so I'm Aww, like, Oh my God. <laughs> A great synergy between yeah. us. <laughs> That's amazing, Siana. I mean, I, ca- I can't wait to dive into more of, of my own personal work. And I know that, you know, um, everyone out there could, that there's, there's, there's no other, uh, there's just so much beneficial, uh, life just gets better when we look at it all. Life gets better when we can, you know, we lean in on that, that, we come to yoga because it's going to, you know, we, 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 I, I mean, I think anyway, we come to yoga because we trust that poses are going to heal us. You know, we, that we keep coming back because my hamstrings feel good or my hips feel good or my chest is more open, you know, and we kind of subconsciously lean into that trust of the healing process there. And I would love, you know, for people to be able to lean into that healing process in life yoga, you know? Mm, beautiful. Yes. To be intimate with the whole of our being. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, it's a gift to be able to do so, although it may seem very hard. But you know, I, I just think that when we when we allow ourselves the time and the space to, to to get to know, that's a side of us that wants to be seen and heard, just like the the high vibes that wants to be seen and heard, and, and so does this other part. It's, um, you know, it's oh, let's yoga. Yes. It, it's stira sukha. You know, it's it's effort and ease, and <laughs> a little bit of everything in between. So. And what just one of my favorite, um, it's a kind of like a, just a little teaching from Joseph Campbell. Again, I, I love the story telling tradition or what is ascribed to him is the cave we fear to enter holds the treasure that we see. Mm. Mm. And so this is my invitation to everyone who's listening to enter the cave of the heart and the inner depth of your being. And there is just such an extraordinary bejeweled homecoming waiting Mm -hmm. for every single one of us. Thank you so much, Deanna, for coming on the show. And I mean, just sharing this beautiful wisdom. I, again, selfishly, I thank you for sure, but I know that everyone listening to this can get something out of this and, and, and to know that it is out there and that it is potent and that it's working, I think is beautiful. So thank you so, so much for, for coming on and sharing mm-hmm. that with us today. I, I can't, yeah, it's just, we need to hear this. Super grateful for you, Danny. Thank you so much for all you're bringing and all you're doing and offering and being for your great beingness. Thank you. Until the next Yogi Misfit sessions, this is Danny and Siana saying peace out. Mm-hmm. Blessings. <laughs> <laughs>